right, welcome back everyone. And um, this is another session, the second one for today after the lightning talk. So this is the first talk in this track. And um, this session we'll be talking about challenges of team development and a new bright spot. That is going to be taken by Vic and his team. All right, Hello. so Vic is here today. And um, just a quick introduction about Vic. He's the co-founder and the co-CEO of a marketing tech-focused company in Germany. And um, he has worked for IBM in the past um, before he found his own startup. And um, also, that was 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, his startup is focused on programmatic solutions. Always too much to do with limited resources means you have to focus on efficiency, which um, this has he brought to multi -initially. Okay, and um, also he's also looking not just for clients but also at its own processes, and then presented approach it as a result of it. So great, great to have you here. And um, he's not only the one that will be presenting today. We have his other colleagues. Abdul and Miria, or they, they are not going to be around. No, they unfortunately they are not making yeah. it today. They are traveling, and uh, but they are on the record. That's why we pre-recorded also part of the session. But I'm yeah. happy to answer questions afterwards. Great. So I, I'll be playing the live video now, um, the recorded session now. Then Dick is going to come back up stage and be able to answer your questions. So please stay tuned and um, see you again at the end of the video. Hello, everyone. Hello. This is Dirk. Uh, and I'm Abdul Baha. And I'm a software engineer here in 20 Zen. And, and he had all the pain related to mail yeah. template development or mail theme development, whatever you call it. But we also have a few glimmers of hope. That's what we said uh, in the in the in the preview, yeah. right? So. Um, if you want to go into a uh, mail template development and uh, maybe you've done it before or you want to do it but be aware of you're entering a world full of pain <laughs> if people have already developed or they are going through this development process for teams they know very well i think so <laughs> yeah i think it's not an exaggeration uh, developing mail templates for mail clients is even worse than writing a website for internet explorer 6 uh, Fortunately, that time has passed, but uh, incompatible email clients still exist or email clients that do not support standards, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Or, or features, maybe. Let's, let's see. So even today, it's uh, a bit challenging when a developer receives the specifications from a designer. Yeah. Maybe especially if that designer doesn't even know about responsive web design. He may have designed print. Yeah. Layouts before. Yes. For the responsiveness for the developer side, it has to be taken care of like mobile view or web view or an email client specific view. So that's really difficult for HTML template designing. So it takes a lot of code to like develop these uh, responsive designs. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes it's not even possible if we, for instance, think about, um, I mean, it's technically possible, but it creates other problems. Think exactly. about uh, titles on on images. Exactly for the for images, some for out. If we take like mostly uh, developers know about Outlook, uh, pain for responsiveness and the Retina image issue and button issue with the Outlook. So yeah. Yeah, we will see all all those details in a moment. <laughs> But uh, yeah, let's let's just go there because yeah, uh, you see. Abdul lost almost all his hair when he was developing mail templates, especially for the legacy editor and yeah, yeah. Now he has grown back his hair. So there are some uh, hidden techniques or you can say a solution for that. I yeah. think so. <laughs> yeah. But it was, uh, yeah, you needed to learn it. I think our checklist was uh, almost 20 to 30 bullets full of hints and tricks. Yeah. What uh, to avoid pitfalls and everything. Yeah, exactly. And it took almost like six months or seven months to clear those 30 to 30, uh, 25 to 30 points yeah. to like manage all those uh, 
pain points in our mail template. So we have to go through each of them to create a very responsive email template. So it was also very time taking for sure. Yeah, we just we just picked a couple of examples of things you need to take into consideration if you program, uh, uh, if you want to develop a mail template that's um, modern, I'd say. Exactly. Yeah, especially, uh, let's see, for instance, HTML buttons. <laughs> yeah. Such a long code that's needed, right? Yeah, only for a single uh, button in HTML, you have to code like 50 to 55 lines of code to just make it responsive for outlook you have you must include the inline styling you also include for other clients you should include style tags so because they support style tags and same styling into that so but it was, but it was pain. also also a pain for the for the editors that using Mautic yeah because in some of those examples i mean about html buttons there are articles written in the web there are code generators just for HTML buttons. Exactly. Uh, and this meant, but this also meant that in certain cases, editors needed to replace the button link two times. So if for, uh, for any chance they missed one, oh. <laughs> some so, people didn't get the right link in yeah, the mail. Yeah. So it was not nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, also like handling light and dark mode is, is still an issue today because not many um, tested email clients do support media queries that are oh, yes. required for that. But it also means that you need to think about if you put text on images, because- uh, um, Because it, you also need media queries for text that should be responsive with mobile views. So yeah, media queries are the main issue, I think so far now. Some clients support media queries, some not, because that's media queries is the if else of the HTML. So, <laughs> so most of the clients do not support that. So that was the reason. It's really challenging for dark mode or light mode to be responsive. In so one thing, avoid having text on images mm -hmm. because the dark mode will switch your, uh, flip your text color. Exactly. So what works in the, in the one mode with a light text on a dark image will not work in the other mode because then you have a dark text on a exactly. dark image. Of course, images will not be inverted. Yeah. It looks strange, yeah. right? So that's the, these are the pain points we already like created those pain points and mentioned them and just we try to uh, find the solution for them in legacy like e html code yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and i think sometimes it's really also a decision for design if you think about the flex order which is only supported partly of email clients you cannot control it so if you have a, a two column view on a desktop uh, and you have a single column view in a mobile uh, then uh, what happens? It always goes from left to right. Exactly. So it's totally depend on the client, which like merge those. Maybe it's text over text or text image, then text image. So it's really hard to manage those flexes order yeah. in mobile view. So I mean, it looks nice on the web browser. Of course. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. But, but for mobile view, that's, that was also challenging in um, legacy but, for HTML. But it's also not solved now. It's just, it, what I wanted to say is sometimes you need also to convince your designers that uh, you always should design with a mobile view in mind. Exactly. Not with a, uh, because, of, yeah, yeah, not with a web view. Yeah. Exactly. Because um, even if it looks nice to have image left, text right, text left, text uh, image right, it just looks wired. We are on a mobile view. Mobile view is, is really, and also if we talk more about like fonts, that that also the case. Like, example, yeah. so we like if we do not include uh, fonts, so HTML has their fallback fonts. So some Arial, uh, some other uh, maybe uh, sans serif. So they have like default. If we want to have our own fonts, so so we provide our clients. Uh, with some local form, so because that's also common, about data privacy issues, data right? privacy issues, yeah. Big thing in Germany last year. <laughs> yeah, that was the case. So we pro after that we provide the local font, so people don't care about like which font. And clients, different clients, do not support all of the fonts. So that that's also the challenging part. So we ask our client like, okay, provide us your fallback fonts, which are your priority. So that was also the like. Yeah, point. I mean, yeah. even even one of some of those biggest email clients do not support custom fonts. Exactly. Like Gmail. Like Gmail, they, they provide all fonts, but they do not support like all custom, fonts. Yeah. That was really strange.
Okay, so um, that there has been a test um, of uh, an, an, a web service called uh, Can I Email? Yeah, yeah. And uh, they uh, we will send you the link afterwards uh, yeah. into the, in the discussion. Um, so they tested 41 uh, email clients, and uh, uh, we just selected the top 10 and the flop 10. Flop 10. Yeah. What's surprising? No, it's not surprising. We are talking. We were dissing Outlook we, yeah, quite exactly. often <laughs> today. So Outlook for Windows is how do you say in English? The red letter. Red letter is it? Yeah, no, maybe I would say nightmare. The ni yeah, nightmare does Outlook. fit very well. <laughs> so Outlook is always on lost position, especially Outlook on Windows. Yeah. Um, they compared uh, those email clients in support of 258 tested uh, mm -hmm. features. Um, this is the let let me oh you couldn't see it. Let us move on the left side. Yeah. I think so. so yeah, the the last place is, uh, goes to Outlook. Um, the first place uh, to Apple Mail. So um, what we can see is Mac OS, iOS, top five. So something Apple is doing something pretty. Yeah, pretty good. Mail client side. So yeah, I think so. They are using much more better servers for its so life. So. Yeah. Yeah, but this is interesting because on the browser side, it's told to be the way around. Safari is kind of a laggard. That's at least what experts say. Yeah, exactly. And in this case, for email clients, they seem to be leading the crowd. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Even web day in game X is on the yeah. first top five <laughs> exactly. because they built on iOS, right? Yes, mm. yes, yes. But for the like on top 10, you can see most are for the Outlook uh, with the web uh, Windows mail, you know? Yeah. As, uh, but I, what I was uh, the biggest surprise for me is that Gmail, Gmail is that yeah. bad. I mean, yeah, uh, but as we as we said, maybe it's not just, of course, they could probably. Yeah. But maybe can. it's something about the security that they are more concerned about. Don't we don't know. know the reason for that exactly, but that that is challenging from Gmail and Outlook side, of course. And the people which are working or which are look, the people which are like on this uh, session, they are here just because they know all this stuff yeah. like they maybe not know all of them, but yeah. yeah. So the case. if you develop for um, business clients, B2B clients, then be aware that uh, that you check what's possible with Outlook because yeah. that's what they will be uh, confronting you with. Exactly. Yeah. Why can my Outlook not show me custom fonts? Yeah, that's a, that's the reason, right? Exactly. So that's what you need to know. We already finished those. As you said. Let's uh, put us on top of those. <laughs> back again. Yeah. Yes, back so, uh, but I, but we also said that we have some uh, uh, good news to share, some ray of hope, um, and one thing that had really improved your life and, and our life. Yeah, exactly. This MGML, MGML is far more better than like custom HTML because for MGML you can manage from a developer side. For me, it was really easy to manage the code because for MGML it's really easy. You just have mj tags like for text you have mj tags for button you have mj button tag but for legacy you have to create a table structure then mention a, a tag then mention href and you have to provide inline styling css styling but this mj button tag that supports everything so so that's, so, that's really so the code is also much slimmer now of for course, you of uh, course, many yeah. problems are solved directly by mgml yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that tag news. also contains all issues for, um, for example, Outlook clients. They mention like through the MSO. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so we will we will see an example yeah. in a moment. Yeah. So this is uh, sixteen lines of MGML code. Yeah. MJML. MGML. So um. So what's what, how's it built? Maybe you give it. A... Yeah, it's 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 same like uh, HTML structure. And you just have to mention your MJ tag and then same like head, it's MJ head, you mention the MJ fonts. So here is the uh, like biggest advantage of MJ uh, fonts is it will include in all tags in your whole like structure. You just mention the name and your uh, local file. It's for now it's a Google API that just for the example we replace here with the our local font so mm. it will mention or it will take the fonts into all of your tags by and, default and it will also care about the different ways of loading a font face font yeah because if you see the font family here it shows like railway 
aerial and then sensoric whatever the fallback so if some client do not support the our local font then it will go for the like uh, fallback forms yeah then we have a single line of mg button yeah exactly and for the html it was like 55 lines of code for single mg button so uh, we have 16 lines of MGML code and we will show you the HTML code. And the problem is I could not ask you, what do you think, how much it is because you know, <laughs> but uh, you may think for yourself now, uh, how big is an HTML file based on 16 lines of this example MGML code? Give a guess. Is it 30, 60? Who says 90? Can I hear 125? <laughs> so yeah. this was just a simple example, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Very simple one. So if as soon as you start uh, coding um, a, a bigger email template, you can imagine what kind of hours you spend also then just to add those in the legacy, exactly. Mautic legacy editor, all those. That was the main challenge in yeah. our, like to maintain that uh, old code, HTML code, it's it, because it's already really messy. So in MGML, you can manage very easily all that code. So. That was the biggest advantage. So, but what does it mean? Uh, so uh, it means that um, how can we benefit from MGML and Mautic? So uh, because sometimes you find out, oh, there is a bug and then you need to have a look. Is this due to the Mautic interpretation of MGML? Is it due to the Grape.js builder? Or is it due to the underlying MGML version with the compiler exactly. and everything, right? Yeah. So we, we just have one example with this um, with the with the button the out, outlook button yeah. there is a there was a bug in MJML that made the button not clickable on the whole area exactly only for I think for the text area text. right the text area so and that was really famous bug at that time mm -hmm. so now now uh, when they just I think in December uh, December somebody created a pull request okay. December twenty two. And they are now about to merge this pull request into a new MGML wow. version. So, but then it also means it will take some time. That's why we have this Zen uh, uh, picture there, yeah. <laughs> Zen style. Uh, it takes, just, just calm, calm down, relax. Yeah. It will make it into the Mautic uh, Grape.js plugin. And then you can benefit from this as well. Exactly. I mean, I, I'm wondering if it makes sense to patch uh, the Mautic Grape.js plugin, or if this I is hope possible. So. Maybe, maybe in next uh, pull request, maybe uh, they will include into mm. the plugin. I okay. hope so. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. So then uh, we can ex then, and, but then you automatically benefit from an improved MGML code because you do not need to change your code again. Exactly. It's yeah. still the same MGML code. Yeah, it will just compile through the like plugin will handle all of those stuff. So the compiler will handle the updated version of like MGML into HTML converter. So it will not be that issue, I think so. Sounds good. And button will work like it should work in yeah. the updated version. Yeah. <laughs> so um, how does the process look like? You still see uh, Abdul is already asleep. <laughs> because yeah, so good. time, con it was so yeah, time consuming. Yeah. It's much better now with MGML. Exactly. So we said design and layout is the beginning. The, somebody sits down and thinks about the design and the, any useful layout. But then comes technical coordination. You developer, you you kill all the fun. Yeah. You say no designer, go back. It doesn't work. It will yeah, not because work. the design should be like responsive uh, in the mobile view, web view, or a mail client view. So not only design but also the responsiveness should be there. So in technical coordination, we discuss all those stuff. Yeah. And we again go to the first step and then a design and layout update it. Then technical coordination, it also takes time. So, sure. but uh, then we you started with HTML quickly, we switched to MGML, even if there was the legacy editor. Yeah, yeah, because then at least you could improve your development process quite a bit. You converted exactly. it to HTML. You tested the HTML. Exactly. With tools like? Testy.at. A T, yeah. Oh, the, the, AT, yeah okay, no. So UK based, but they're using an Austrian, an, an Austrian domain. Whatever. Yeah. It's a, a very uh, affordable alternative to Litmus. Yeah, but but the in testing part, I think we should also mention the three part in testing. Simple testing, like when we convert from MGML into HTML, we have mm -hmm. to 
like see okay design is good then we go into the multic then test there for the because we have to add slots data slots in because in legacy editor it was the like you, we have to add um, data slots data slot container that works for a legacy motic editor but then you need to the, package it and install it install it on the motic instance and then check the whole template if there is any issue again go into the designing and then again add those slots and then we move there they're also like it, it is complex testing also and then at the end we test on different clients if there are some issues for like outlook almost many clients have those issues so we fix that and then again upload into motic and then test those clients it's really but it didn't even say anything about researching the bugs right <laughs> yeah no no as you could not know if you made a mistake or if uh, if mgml has this issue or the compiler yeah, has the issue. yeah that that's an other challenging task okay did i make something in html code did i break something or it's a mgml bug so there are also the layers of challenges you have to go through for each of these points so that was really challenging so yeah. uh then you otherwise you go back to point three and start again yeah, exactly. It's in, in any from development, testing, packaging, installation, whenever there is bug or issue, again, go to the third point and go all of them. So this means if you are experienced, uh, you have done all your learning lessons and uh, you go through this uh, old times of developing for the legacy editor, even with MGML, with all the testing, uh, it was easily to be on the safe side, three to four days of an effort. Exactly. Yeah. Even then. Because we know our pain points, but we have to resolve that. It takes time. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and as I'm a, 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 a not just IT, but also business administration, yeah. I also think about the cost. As exactly, I'm exactly. Yeah. That's, that's your part. So, so, not just for the setup, but also for the maintenance over the next years. This means um, uh, if you spend that, that time, you need to also to explain your client why it takes so much time to create a custom exactly. template and well tested. They they don't know about all those pains. Exactly. Then we we also have to mention like we converted it from MGML that was the old version and no, now uh, we you have... know what arrives at the client mm -hmm. yada yada blah blah. Exactly. You don't understand. Yeah, yeah, but they pay money for that and they would rather pay it for something else. So exactly. that's so that's why uh, MGML was a great improvement. Of course, but uh, I think we also have some additional approach that we can introduce you to. Oh, this looks good. Yeah. Sunny, yeah. bright, bright yeah, future. With green background. So, so um, the thing is, when we uh, developed, even with an improved process with our standard template, um, still we had this issue with versioning. So we exactly. have an improvement, we have another bug fixed, and we always needed to pull out all of our clients templates even if they are the same layout exactly. but customized and yeah. you needed to repackage them test them edit. it was a repetitive process so we decide to have something like the main process that we already showed you that could be managed into a one click so if there are some updates or challenges we will focus on the new challenges rather than go into same loop so there is one approach we have built yeah. so those all pain points will be on one click. If there are some other things, we will work on that. So it will less time and more productive. And if there are some new issues, we will work on that. So, but especially as we only work on one template, which yeah. is not customized, it's exactly. a master template, every client benefits automatically from improvements. Exactly. exactly. That's that's the thing. So uh, we think we thought about developing a professional standard template from ground up. Uh, well developed, well tested, uh, improved and maintained. And uh, this service is then, this master template serves as the, bar, the basis for a CI adoption. Exactly. So, um, which we show you in a moment, you just uh, adopt fonts, colors, logo, we will see it. And then you have a CI uh, compliant template. Exactly. Like in this example, hello home property. And we have the CI on the left side and the right side, we already see a preview. Uh, which we see right in the moment in live yes. uh, with the editor where you can adjust it. You can even give it to your designer. Yeah, exactly. You can't <laughs> break anything. You can only change things that are allowed to change. Yeah, exactly. We give the options for that. 
and this specific master template will be compatible for most of the clients not all of them but most of the clients it will cover you don't have to you know, go through every testing step everything so it will uh, save a lot of time and most of the effort so it will it will be uh, just one click away like if uh, you see here like you have option for your logo you can upload your logo and yeah also the placement placement could just be... a second it's loading okay oh, i think i need to reload maybe we uh -huh. are locked out again okay yeah. okay quickly so no you can do change okay so th that's that was the login mm -hmm. yeah because they they should also have a login for that right yeah yeah and yeah this is one click where now we have only many three okay this is a subscription model for that right <laughs> okay so from here yeah exactly you can place your so most of the client asks us to okay just now logo should be here and there it also was like again package then again upload into Motic. so that was also the thing and what else so you can change the typography yeah, typography you font, can change font. the color Ah, and yes, you directly see uh, as a feedback in real time what yeah. the new template will look like. So yeah, yeah, then give it to the designer. Exactly. And just... they, yeah, they can just change on the on the go, and then they like save the template. So what what else would we adjust? We also have I think the footer with all the legacy. Just scroll down for a moment. So yeah. So it. so this is the uh, master template. They can have every design they want, mm -hmm. and yeah. Uh, yeah. social links and uh, social links, yeah. all the legal stuff right legal stuff yeah yeah good so then you export it you have a you have a ci compliant yeah. uh, template all right yeah you can download from here it will download yeah, we prepared then... it already exactly this one just so let's let's reload not that we have the same situation again uh, no? exactly. just a second can you see mm -hmm. what do you see on Ah, oh, you see. Ah, oh, okay. So, you see. so we meant to make a new template. So here, this one we have generated. Actually, it's the same approach that we use um, a, a full blown uh, template, which you can strip down. Exactly. Or you can duplicate uh, parts of it. Um, but we, but also the generator prepares a short version of it exactly um so uh, the short version uh is for if you want to have a quick mail and quick email. Want, yeah uh, exactly exactly yeah. for so this is the full fledged template so whatever they want design with fonts button so column with text so yeah the thing is we, we are also thinking about if we can use those block editor but the same as with the legacy the block editor if it's not adjusted and it cannot be adjusted by the theme will break styling so all the things that you carefully crafted in design um will break if you use a column for instance exactly. to create a new column um uh, and also styling of text will not be inherited uh yes. that's that's the some of the issues yes um we still have a bit of a difference between the the um yeah, as it's shown in the editor and as it's shown uh but this is life, yeah. something we need to live with Be right exactly because we have to change uh, those images or icons that's why they are looking like this otherwise but great it's i mean for our clients it saves a lot of time exactly. and money yeah yeah because we don't have to go through the all those pain points because it already covers that. So we know that. So where's all the present? Ah, that's the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, on a button of a click, you can generate a CI compliant yeah. template. So this is now not the time of a couple of days. It does not cost uh, a lot of money. And uh, we want to give you the chance to try it out. Uh, we have a limited, a limited amount of coupons ready. So head over to our link twzn.de slash generate get your coupon register and get updates try it out and send us some feedback we would love to hear what you think about it what your ideas are we already also have a couple of ideas how we can extend uh, this model also to work for you and um, especially let's also get into discussion if you are a Mautic partner or a hoster 
and uh, think about how you can make it easier for your clients to get started. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get into a discussion about the joint business model. Uh, generally, there is no issue. Try uh, If you start working on your own mail template, we can only uh, suggest to work with, of course, with MGML. Of course, yeah. Grape.js sure. is now anyway the default, more yeah, or less. Exactly, I think. And uh, you do not want to live in a world of pain yeah. of <laughs> HTML from email exactly. clients. Um, we will be with you in a moment uh, live for your questions. So looking forward to see you in a moment. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Abdul. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Good. We want to quickly move into questions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we want to move in quickly into questions. So you can write, write them in the Q&A um, tab if you have questions on, on the generator and about the approach. And maybe also you have questions on uh, things that we mentioned in terms of trouble with mail development. Up to you. We can. We still have uh, 15 minutes time for discussion. I also put some yeah, link, yeah. links that we had in the chat. Uh, I oh no, the links that we mentioned. I also put into the chat. And uh, this uh, generate uh, is really just about starting as a product in the market, and it's not just um, for end customers, also for clients who want to uh, order their own CI compliant email template. Um, we are also looking forward to discuss with other um, Mautic partners, Mautic agencies on how they handle it. Um, I, I would be surprised if they are able to program a, a custom email template within one day and tested it. Uh, but then still the issue is with the, with the maintenance. If you need to maintain uh, uh, mails over a couple of years and uh, fixing bugs and then handling all the uh, distribution to all your mail templates. For instance, we already have uh, like, I don't know, a dozen uh, people using that template now. And um, when, we've, when we have a fix, we can just distribute uh, the new version of this template easily. Okay, perfect. So let me, I have a few questions to ask you. And um, the first question is, what is the difference between coding for browser and for mail clients? Okay. Um, the browser has typically much more support for CSS, especially for media queries. Um, so you can find out something about um, the browser who's displaying your website. But if you are coding for um, email clients, uh, you don't have this capability. So you don't really know if, um, if your um, email client can handle certain CSS functions. So that's why you cannot know if it will be, this, uh, will be shown correctly. So that's why it's more like a defensive approach. We uh, do not, most of the times, do not use features that only a couple of email clients can handle and um, focus more on, yeah, on, 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 on a broad support instead of supporting features that only little amount of email clients can handle. All right, great, great. So um, just quickly, um... If I may ask you, what, what's been your experience like? And um, how, how much experience, how long have you been working on uh, mail templates development? Yeah, at the, at the, when we started with Mautic, we quick, quickly came to that situation where we said, okay, we cannot use the distributed templates. And also the um, marketplaces don't have uh, ready to use templates um, for Mautic. It's a, it was a specific, you needed to um, keep care of certain Mautic specific stuff. And um, so that's why, and we did not have the, the experience and the, and the capabilities in our agency at that time. So we were reaching out to uh, outsourcing to partners far away um, who said they are uh, uh, good in mail template development. But finally, we ended up that we had so many hours for project management, for testing, for repeating, um, that it just didn't pay off. I mean, we, we needed to test it all the time and testing for emails and combinations of email clients takes its time. And if you do it repeatedly, that does not make a lot of fun. Mm. So then, as, uh, and quickly, as uh, um, Abdul uh, explained, uh, of course, we, uh, we developed HTML templates for clients. Uh, most of the time, it was not profitable for us. 
because uh, we made an estimate, we developed it, and all the testing could not be estimated uh, so much. And you also, clients um, cannot see the value or the, the, the effort that's needed to, to make a good tested, well-defined email template. Out of, they, they cannot uh, judge it, and that's, they do not need to understand why it's so complicated. It's our, it's our trouble, it's our business. So that's why we were always thinking on how we can improve this process. We used MGML as soon as it was available, even for creating legacy templates. And but still, then uh, we came back to the to the point that we need to still to update our master templates and distribute them. And then we came up with this uh, generator as a tool, and um, this now makes it pretty easy. We are pretty quick having a CI compliant template, uh, providing it to the client, and. Uh, we found also out that it's not so much about the layout that makes the difference between businesses. Um, let me also say we are talking mainly about medium-sized companies here, uh, not so much about e-commerce. We saw other examples today in the keynote speech uh, of other approaches. But uh, what we do here is 80% of the standard communication um, of uh, medium-sized companies. And for them, if we... Um, change for instance the logo if we change fonts if we change colors if we re rearrange prompts um, the whole template gets a different feeling a different style and the ci compliant so people are pretty happy with that um, we are using this template even for a luxury watch uh, manufacturer and just by using their logo and their colors it looks much more elegant for instance than our own technology-focused uh, mail template that we are using, which is more like fresh and technology-oriented uh, and not so elegant, much more modern. And uh, that's really not so, it's not so much the layout, it's really the, the content and the, the typography, if you use bold or not, if you use capitalized letters or not, um, that with, this, with these little changes, you can achieve uh, uh, pretty much uh, CI-compliant stuff. All right, great. So that's why also when we saw, how, so how does this compare to other approaches? Um, I was uh, thinking a long time about it uh, when I uh, saw those other approaches. It's really the purpose on where do you want to use this template? Do you want to use this template embedded within your Mautic or do you want to have another service that injects mails into your Mautic? This is uh, a different approach. So uh, we also always wanted to have the editor very close to Mautic. So that's why we, we try to get the best out of the embedded Mautic editor, even if it has its issues. And uh, also, we think that most of our clients who are in marketing um, do not change a lot of layout and styling all the time. It's much more that they create a new campaign, that they clone, for instance, from an existing one, that they change the text, that they change links, and they have a new campaign. So uh, it's not the design, the, the individual approach so much. It's much more usability in a daily business so and that's uh, that's why we think that this is a good approach for this, this type of customers who are not uh, sending a new designed newsletter each week which looks totally different than the week before but even that you could do if you have the right elements but right now we focus with our elements on a business clients all right great great so so let let, let, let me ask you one more question and um this is going to be like two in one question so what's the future like and um, also, um, can you discuss about what step for people that might be interested in this? Okay, so um, what might the future bring with this template generator? We, for instance, uh, this, this is an algorithm in the background, so we could also have more different types of templates. Maybe even partners could uh, provide their templates uh, into this joint uh, um, product. And uh, so we can even then extend the variety a bit, but uh, always with a machine in the background that cares about generating the CI compliance. And uh, the other thing is, uh, you, if you want to stay for the next session, which is about low code and marketing automation, I could also mention that we integrate this uh, much more with each other so that we also uh, can inject uh, content um, uh, at the, uh, where, we, where we place placeholders, for instance. So we have a lot of automation going on with low code at, a, at the second approach, and uh, hopefully both uh, will grow together in the next steps. So um, I think it's much about automation processes, optimized processes in the agencies, uh, which then also help to make them more profitable. 
Okay, perfect. Ah, so, and, uh, yeah, what everyone can test it right now, <laughs> I sent the link uh, that I mentioned also into the chat. Um, give it a try yourself. Um, hit, hit us with questions, and we will also, uh, together with you, work out um, how a joint business model could like, look like for partners. And um, there, are, of course, there are also some free goodies that we distribute with, uh, for everyone who registers um, uh, via, via this link. All right, perfect. All right, thank you so much, Dick. And I'm um, also do I do extend a greeting to Abdul, who couldn't be able to hear, come here today. And um, I hope you've been enjoying the conference so far. Yes, it's pretty interesting, and I always love to see other people working with Mautic and, and developing new stuff for it, yeah. new extensions, new integrations. Pretty good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Please do make sure you join the lounge so that you can be able to interact with other people who might want to discuss more with you. Okay. All right, All right. bye yeah, for I, now. Yeah, All I right. will be on, online today uh, in the evening or also tomorrow, um, but I will be in the next session now live, so I cannot, uh, I'm not available right now for talks. No problem, that works. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, thank you everybody. Um, we really have um, having a wonderful time in this track. And um, we'll be talking again in about 15 minutes for our next session. Why then, uh, please feel free to go around, visit the booth, or try to interact with the speakers at the lounge. And then we we'll meet again in about less than 15 minutes.